Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored, and we are guest list. Uh, we have no guest today, so I am here with a junior grandmaster himself, Greg McDaniel. He's in the co-pilot seat. He's live. He's live. here with us as live we are every Monday and Wednesday at 3 p.m. We are so excited to be here. Uh, we are. I'm going to make him shut up for a minute, actually. So while we wait for people to join us live, I know, I know, it's terrible. So uh, while we wait for people to join us live, I just want to thank you. If you're watching the replay here, make sure to subscribe on YouTube, and then if you prefer the audio version, nestled right here between your ears, where we so so belong. Uh, make sure to uh, so deep, so deep and good. Make yes. sure to subscribe yes, on so iTunes. Stitcher. Please stop doing that, Greg. It's creepy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> For those of you who are joining us live, thank you so much. We uh, we love to see you here and, and love to interact with you guys. And uh, if you follow us, if you're friends with us on Facebook or whatever the case is, uh, Greg McDaniel or uh, Matt Johnson, you can find me at Pursuing Results. So you can actually message and and interact with us during the show. Facebook is the easiest way to do that. And uh, we love interacting with you guys and uh, and want to make sure that we take some of your questions. So if you have any, shoot them over to us uh, via Facebook while we're broadcasting here live. Otherwise, this is going to be an interesting episode. So we've got a couple things we want to cover. We've got uh, Greg has a rant apparently i just found that out before not we went a live rant. not a rant uh, uh, it's going to be something that i've never experienced before uh and i hope i handled it right but we'll see okay so it's more like a riff yeah kind of like a riff yeah okay all right so greg has a riff uh we're going to talk about questions so greg has uh, some potentially life-changing questions that he's going to bring i have some questions that i've picked up from uh, various sources um just entrepreneurs and people that I've run across over the years, like key questions that they ask themselves, and you know, then like I have some key color? questions that I ask myself. Yeah, what's your favorite color exactly? You right after like long walks, Seven Eleven, yeah. you know, stuff like that. You know, yeah. these are roses your favorite or tulips and those kind yeah, of. I like I like long walks by the fire. You know, nice in front of the beach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyway, so we've got questions that we'll, we will share. We'll also take some questions uh, from the Facebook lead, uh, group, Lead Gen Scription Objections. So there's a couple that caught my eye. And um, before we let Greg get on his rant, I just wanted to briefly mention a couple things. So number one, quick thank you to Viral Marketing for helping to make the show happen. Uh, check out what they do for Greg at gregsmarketingexamples.com. And then uh, there was, uh, so this cruise, right, that Jamie Cox is putting together for December. So he Can't just wait. announced the... Um, so obviously he announced Greg and I as the first round of speakers. He just booked a, and announced the latest speaker for that is a guy named Michael Hellickson, uh, who was one of the number one guys or the number one guy in the country at one time uh, during the REO days and has always been one of the top 1% uh, realtors ever since he got started. I guess he got licensed before he was even out of high school and has uh, has been coaching agents since then. So really, really high caliber guys, and that's just uh, so far. So I'm excited to see who the other speakers are. But if you're not already a member, head on over to Facebook and go to the Realtor Lead Generation Scripts. Uh, or, yeah, is that what it's called? Lead, Realtor, Realtor Lead, 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 Generation. Generation. Lead Generation, not Scripts, just Lead not Generation. Scripts, just Realtor Lead Generation. It's Jamie Cox's group on Facebook. He's got, a, I think, pushing 3,000 members, if not more. Uh, so join up with that group. That's where he's posting all the updates on the cruise. So if you want more information on that, that's taking place. I think it's the second week of December, and it's Eastern Caribbean. It's a really cool run through the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Good time to share. Good time to speak and and share some content and then mastermind with uh, some other top agents. Yeah, we're going to be having three days of cruising, guys. So four days we're going to be, you know, ham boned. You know, we're walking around in, uh, in in bathing suits, getting sunburned. And then the other three, we're going to be recovering on the boat and leading amazing breakout sessions. So get on this thing, man. It's going to be super, super fun. You can hang out with us in person. It's going to be a rock star event. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So I'm excited for that. And uh, let's see. Do you want to do your uh, – I'm, I'm curious because I've, you obviously sprung this on me before, right before we went live. But what, what in the world happened to you this weekend, Greg, that you're so thrown off by and whatever? First off, what's up? I got to get that in there. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was walking out of my uh, nephew's uh, baseball game because Riley is six and he's like, Uncle Greg, we come to our last baseball game. How the fuck do you turn down a six year old? You don't. So I showed up and I'm watching it. I'm hanging out, getting to hang with my niece and nephews and we're just relaxing and game's over. Everybody's saying goodbye. And I'm watching. Just, I'm, I'm in my camel shorts, my, my torn up flip flops, you know, baseball hat, not dressed up at all and not looking to talk to anybody, especially about real estate. And uh, this this mom like chases me down, and she's like, "Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, you're you're Greg McDaniel, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, don't you <laughs> tell him in there, Eileen? <laughs> oh, for that you go on camera. Oh, there she is. Yes, she makes fun of me. She gets on the camera, <laughs> puts the lotion in the bucket. 
uh, okay, Hannibal Lecter. Anyways, um, <laughs> so the lady start, runs up to me and she's like, oh my God, you're Greg McDaniel. I said, yeah. She's like, you know, I, I've been following your show. I love it. You know, uh, my son is a, you know, he, he loves everything about real estate. Um, and I, I just wanted you to, I wanted him to meet you. I'm sitting there going, what the fuck is going on? This is so surreal. And the kid's standing there and I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? Kid lights up like a Roman candle. He's like, hey man, what's going on? I'm like, hey, you like real estate? Oh man, I love real estate. You know, and they're, they're explaining to me all the stuff that he does and everything. And, you know, I, um, I, I, when I, I don't know, if, I don't, I don't know if I, I, when I walked away, I'm like, shit, was I, was I kind enough? Did I handle that correctly? You know, I, did I do this right? Is, I mean, I, I don't know. It was just well, a throwing your drink in his face and running away probably wasn't the best move on your part. Screaming. <laughs> 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 well, what do you, I mean, how did you handle that other than just, you know, asking him about his, you know, what he's interested in and kind of, you know, I mean, he, how, how young a kid was this? I mean, he, I'm assuming he's somewhere beyond the age of zygote. He is, thank God. Okay. <laughs> zygote. So he was—he was, he was more than a fetus. Knowledge? What? He was more than a fetus. Well, I thought you said totally something else. Okay. Um. Anyways, you know, I, <laughs> um, I can't even keep a straight face when I do this. Okay. <laughs> Approximately, how old was this kid? I think. 12, 14, somewhere in there. I don't know. Okay. Um, but I, somewhere I, but between I the ages of 10 and 17. Yeah, somewhere in there. I offered to, you know, get him out to on go on brokers tour with me. You know, hey, you know, get a hold of, um, you know, get a hold of my team, and you know, we'll we'll get you out on brokers tour, and you know, it's, you know, drive you around, and you know, for do real, we hang out some real agents. And he lit up. He was so excited. Then I walked away. I'm like, dude, why didn't I just go hand him a business card, write my, you know, private cell phone on the back, make it a special thing, and be like, hey, man, call me directly. I'd be happy to take you out. Mm. That's where I think I dropped the ball. But, well, why, why don't you have your patent pending real estate uncensored business cards available at all times? They are in my car, and I got stopped before my car. And if I would have handed both to him, but I don't, I'm not sure Mama Bear wants Greg going fuck all the time around her little kid. Ah, uh, okay. Because this is uncensored, Matthew. We know yes. this. Yes. I go off I the do. rails all yes, the time. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. mm. So yeah, that was my that was my rant. I hope I handled that right. I'm definitely going to handle it different in the future i lean behind me is just going what is wrong with this guy she <laughs> she's not the only one <laughs> so you in front of me and her behind me both are going this guy's losing his damn marbles yes well Great. i guess it's just me and maybe it's just me because of my personality but i i have a distinct lack of caring i i would not it would not give me a second thought probably in terms of how i handled that and whether i should have given a 12 year old child my personal cell phone number and like that. I don't think that why, would have occurred to me, nor would have occurred to me to question my judgment on that. Yeah, we're never letting you do the McDaniel Challenge, ever. Oh, you're having a problem? You're having a problem? Well, sack it up! There's no crying in real estate. God, Not that bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> the way you just came off was pretty bad, dude. <laughs> see, I just don't care. I would never care about a 12-year-old child. I mean, go cry uh, in the streets, you young, you young thing. That's right. Uh, go cry in the streets. <laughs> I don't see no bawling. I don't, I don't have kids. I don't want to clean up shit and diapers. I don't want to see you cry. So go away from me. Exactly. All right. Well, what do you say we uh, we take a question real quick here? Yes. All right. So there was um there was one that that caught my eye here, and of course it, it's disappearing from my screen as I'm trying to uh, get to it. But, but yeah. So there was it was something that you've recommended that people do, and somebody was thinking about implementing it and is having a hard time. So this is from the Lab Coat Agents group, and I just scrolled across, and I happened to catch my eye before we went live. So Ian Handel says, some weeks ago I read a Legion idea in this group. It said go to Starbucks, Panera, or whatever in the morning and sit near the door with a sign that says ask me real estate questions and try to get leads. So I made the sign, but I'm having trouble getting the nerve up to do it. Would you do this? Well, so basically he needs to go purchase himself a bigger brass pair of balls and firmly attach them. That would be my first move, sir. If you're clanging as you walk through the front door, clang, 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 now you're set to talk to people about real estate. But if you're not going to, you know, you know, Get the balls to do this, dude. Then don't bitch about it. Oh, I, I don't know how to do it. I made the sign, but I, I just can't get out the door. Shut the fuck up, dude. If you're gonna do it, do it. Don't bitch about not doing it. Next question. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, dude. That really that drives me. That really grinds oh, my gears, Matt. That grinds that my grinds, gears. Yeah, that really grinds my gears. I love that. All right. 
<laughs> Family Guy reference. Okay, so um, so let's go over to the lead gen scripts and objections group. So Becky Good asks, uh, hey, does anybody have a good door knocking script inviting people to an open house? Much uh, Any input is much appreciated. So Greg, how would you invite somebody to an open house on the door knock? I bribe them, Matt. I bribe them. We have free food. And, and, you know, some tasty coffee. Come on by. No, really, I mean, in all honesty, what the, the easy thing to do is say, you know, hi, Matt, Julie, are those three obese babies back there? Um, my name is Greg McDaniel. I'm a real estate agent here in the area with J. Rockcliffe Realtors. I want to come by and let you know that we uh, just listed uh, 123 Main Street right here on your block. Uh, we're going to be having a, uh, a neighborhood only uh, open house. It's going to be going from noon until 1. Uh, there's going to be refreshments uh, there. We're going to whatever you can have, like cookies or or, or bagels or sandwiches or whatever it's going to be. Right. Um, just want to come by and personally introduce myself and then invite you to into the, to the open house. I mean, that what you're doing there is you're doing a couple of things. You're using the the words personally invite you because it's not like you have your underling doing it. You personally wanted to do it. Terry did that to me all the time. He would have me go on the streets and he would say, you know, hi, my name is Greg McDonald. Do that whole thing. Terry wanted me to come out and he, Terry wanted me to have, let you know that he wanted you to personally be invited to the open house or whatever else. Um, it's the word personal. That's the whole thing. Personal. Okay. So however you stuff it in there, just stuff it in there. Stuff it in there. Just, in yeah, there. just, get, just shoehorn it right in there. Okay. <laughs> so Terry wanted me to tell you that he would like to invite you personally by sending me to personally invite you to the <laughs> open house. <laughs> just want to make sure I get that right. Yeah. So Terry personally asked me to personally come to you and personally invite you to the very personal open house. Because he couldn't personally do it. Yes. he couldn't personally <laughs> do it. That's right. Terry couldn't personally be here, but he wanted to personally invite you by impersonally sending me. Okay. All right. So, uh, so personal, personal, and, and bribe them with free food, gifts, and uh, other accoutrement. Yeah, massages, whatever you want to do. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, but, you know, also you wanted to make it a special thing. You know, it's a neighborhood only. Nobody else is allowed in, you know, right. kind of a thing. You know, and that has in. to be authentic, and you guys do that by having it as a separate hour before the rest of the open house starts. You could also do, uh, if you've got, you know, if you don't have a lot of listings on your hands, why not do a Saturday or a Friday night uh, neighbors only open house, and that way you get your signs out in the neighborhood twice. Yeah, Saturdays we don't see Saturday works work. Yeah, works it depends really on well. the area, you know. But you know, a Friday it's night Saturday wine and cheese, day. you know, a Friday night wine and cheese for the neighbors, mm -hmm. so there's no driving, you know, yeah. you know, that could be a nice little way of doing it. Yeah, like a happy hour open house. That'd be kind of a cool thing. <laughs> Sir, if you're driving, please leave your keys in the buckets. That's right. No driving. <laughs> Uber it. But I'm just two doors down. I don't care, yeah. sir. <laughs> That's right. If you drove here, we have some lovely, lovely non-alcoholic wine for you right here. <laughs> it's the lighter stuff. Don't worry. Yeah. You can have like a... Stick, with, it, stick with the cheese, sir. If you could just just stick with the cheese. Okay. Matt, we can't so, have uh, our kids eat cheese. You know they're lactose intolerant. <laughs> Come on, my kids. Yeah. <laughs> my diabetic obese three children that I have. Yeah. Okay. They're now lactose intolerant. Yes. They're now lactose intolerant. Wow. <laughs> Are they lacto ovo vegetarian too while we're at it? Yeah. Why not? Let's All just right. slap it Fantastic. on top. Fantastic. Diabetic lacto ovo vegetarian children. All right. What does that even mean? Uh, actually, I don't know. I don't want to know. Um, so, uh, so Lori Smalls asks, I need help. I've been picking up the phone and making the callings to lead gen, but I'm not actually setting appointments. I've been calling the expireds. So the question is, are most appointments set on the first initial contact? Really depends how good you are. I mean, what you have to do is you have to identify what's going on. You know what that pain point is. Why didn't it sell? What their motivation is? You know, are they going to hold it off the market? Are they looking at other agents? Why aren't they interviewing multiple agents? You have to preload them with value up front. Like I, I keep saying this, preload them with value up front. You know, voluntarily go over there. If you don't get them, or you don't get them on the phone, or you had a conversation, dude, go to like Touch CMA, build a CMA for them, bind it, print it in color drive it over, you know, and deliver it to them personally. You know, if you can't get them personally, go get a FedEx little bag thing that you put envelopes in. Go get one, put the CMA in it, put it on the front porch. Guaranteed 1000% that will be opened and not thrown away. Because curiosity is going to kill the cat and putting it in the FedEx bag is just something that one, is going to protect it from the elements outside. And two, it's going to guarantee that they're going to open it. Totally forgot about that tip. We learned that years and years and years ago, and it's worked so freaking well. Hmm, interesting. That's, that's what I would do. It's just building value. Do a handwritten letter or note like, um, like oh, God. Like we have our, our handwritten thank you letters like this. 
you know, just our logo here, blank on the inside, and then, you know, thank you, we love referrals on the back. Um, send those out to folks. I get, I used to get thank you letters for my thank you letters. I'm like, wait, yeah. <laughs> you're thanking me right. for a thank you letter? Should I thank them in another thank you letter? Just keep this battle going back and forth. But that's what I, I would do is you need to identify what, what their reasoning is. And then don't try to close them. Try to open them with value, nonstop value, and then build a relationship. But it, once you see there's once you see that there is uh, some movement here, like if they're stonewalling you and you keep asking and going questions and they move a little bit, be right on them. You know, just be right on them. And as the great Howard Britton would always say, go three deep. They say no, you know, to, uh, you know, ask a question and then ask three to five additional questions deeper on that, uh, on that subject matter to understand their real motivation. That's what I would do. Actually, it's yeah. a chance for us. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, th that's a hard question to answer, but I, I have, I mean, there is the possibility that the scripting is right and the market is right and that they would be receptive to the right person calling them and building trust and setting an appointment on the first call and that person, the person who's asking this question just doesn't have their phrasing and tonality together or they're not closing for the appointment, you know, which, and I hate that we're closing in the sense of like persuading people to do things they are not super inclined to do, but expireds are not exactly in the state of mind where they're, where they're super receptive to you anyway, and you're going to have to overcome that. They're frustrated, they're angry, they're upset. They might be upset at every realtor ever who has ever walked the face of the earth. Sounds like a, and, um, sounds like a nice girlfriend. Um, I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> correct. I hate every man on earth right now. Yeah, exactly. You're like, why but, not? Yeah. You want to go in and get burgers and a beer? Come on. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain subset of those that they're not going to be responsive to anybody calling, and they're not going to set a, an appointment on the first call for anyone. So there's going to be some follow-up involved, right? I mean, there's there's only a small pool of those that you might actually be able to set an appointment with on the first call. Uh, but there, it is possible. I mean. It, the first place I would start is going back and, and recording my side of the conversation and going back and listening to my phrasing and tonality and just see what my impression is. Maybe have some other people listen to it, you know, my broker, my productivity coach, my team leader, whatever, and just sit them down and have them listen to my side of the conversation and, and just make sure that there's not something in the phrasing or tonality to where it's um, either not conveying competence, not conveying so that you're different, you know, I mean, with expired, you have to be very, you have to have it right on the tip of your tongue. Why are you different? Well, Matt, it, or, or we can just flip this thing completely on its head and pull a Darren Hardy on him. Mm -hmm. You know, Darren Hardy, when he was doing real estate, what he would do is he, all the expireds, fuck making phone calls, dude. Yeah, show he, up at their house. He, he, you know, he, he manned up. He took a sold sign. I mean, do we have any sold signs in here? No. Oh, well. <laughs> they're all out on properties, Greg. Yeah, they're all on properties. What am I talking about? <laughs> no, um, but he would take a sold sign. He would go to the board and he'd buy like one of those cheap, flimsy, car, you know, cardboard things or whatever. And he would go, "Hi, my name's Darren Hardy, with such and such real estate agent," and hand them the sold sign. You'll be needing this when you work with me. Those are some stones. <clears throat> some stones. But you know what? Are they going to remember you? Yes. Yes. Now, do you have the marketing plan to back it up? <laughs> well, we're just the dog chasing the car, man. We haven't caught the car yet. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Let's let's have that together before you claim that they're going to be needing a sold sign. Let's make sure you figure out how to sell home. Do you have a marketing plan? Yeah. Yep. So how how are sure. you different from other agents? Uh, well, okay. I'm super. I'm I'm just chocked full, like overflowing with integrity. Just I, overflowing with. I started yesterday. Huh? My, my cup runneth over with hard work and effort, and I will try hard. Yeah. <laughs> because I haven't done a deal. Oh, go ever. away. Okay. So uh, so this is an interesting question. Uh, I don't know if you have strong opinions on this either way, but I thought I'd throw it out to you because you are um, oh boy. big on uh, on circle prospecting through Mojo. Have you, uh, Bob LaPlante wants to know, he's digging the new Mojo 2.0. What does everybody else think? Uh, what What's new about the Mojo 2.0, Greg? Do you know? Um, if he's talking about the newer version, which we've been using for a while, Bob's behind mm. the eight ball. Yeah. Um, it used to be a very, very heavy program uh, that you would have to download on onto your uh, device, your you know laptop or, or, or desktop, and then run it from there. Now it's just up in the cloud. Um, it's it, instead of having all of your for a while, all of your screen used to sit right in front of you. Now it compacts over to one side, and when you get a call, it opens up. Really, that's actually pretty annoying um, because I, I like having all What's my that? buttons there. I like having all my buttons there. I like you know I just mm. don't like everything moving around so much, but. It is what it is. It's a lighter program. You don't have to enter 
I think five or six numbers as your code, you know, to, to do the call. It's only two numbers now. Um, I mean, it's, they have good scripts. They have good callback settings. They have, it's a good system. I mean, and if, and if this is his first time using it, then yeah, of course he's going to be digging on it. I dig on it. It's a, yeah. it's a nice program. No, just curious. Thought maybe there were some uh, some changes that you uh, you might want to point out, but it doesn't sound like there. He, like you said, he's maybe behind the times a little bit. So, yeah. All right. So uh, so let's take a second, give out some shout outs, and then we're going to dig into uh, some content today. We're going to talk about uh, potentially life changing questions. So questions that we we picked up from various sources. And Greg, you have a, a list of potentially life changing questions mm -hmm. and inspirational questions. And then I'm going to talk about some of the questions that uh, that I've set for myself and are in my kind of the daily wrap up which is um, how I end my days in terms of the few questions that I ask uh, to figure out if I've done well that day and what adjustments I need and then there's uh, some interesting if we have time we'll get to um, some interesting questions from a recruiting a high, very very high level recruiting coach that I know that I might be doing a podcast with upcoming so we'll cool. get to all that stuff so yeah so as far as the, uh, the shout outs I'll, I'll dive in first real quick since mine are shorter so, uh, so Viral Marketing, obviously they run Greg's real estate video blog in the East Bay. So if you want more examples of what they do and see exactly what they send out to his database that get some results and, and how he follows up with his ISA to make the calls based on who watches the videos and get more repeat and referral sales from their database, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, around 6,000 and probably growing at this point. So uh, go to gregsmarketingexamples.com. So you'll see his uh, an ex example of his YouTube channel, the blog that they've built for him, and the uh, the emails that they send out, as well as a video where Greg talks about exactly what they do for him and why it's important and why he still continues to work with them. So oh, by, by all the way, that stuff, yeah, that's really funny. I was watching a YouTube this morning, and all of a sudden, boom, yeah, there I am. Good lord. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, handsome, what's going on? Good morning to you, Tusha. <laughs> Top of the morning. <laughs> That's right. You're getting your own ads. I, love I, I, I found myself watching on almost the entire ad. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to cost Frank money. No. Go yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Frank, so Frank and Viral Marketing took that, took Greg's video, uh, endorsing, you know, like just sharing what they do and has been running it. To us. So if you are a fan of the show, I'm sure you've seen Greg's video and so forth. So make sure that you check that out, gregsmarketingexamples.com. Uh, Viral is a great supporter of the show. So just going over there and, and checking them out is a great way to support what we're doing. Uh, but it's also very good for you to learn what Greg is doing so that you can, you uh, you can go out and work, possibly work with them at some point in the future. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we are very, very happy to. Um, we don't have anything official worked out. But we just want to mention the Homing In app. Um, if you, those of you that remember, we interviewed Todd Miller. Uh, here about a month ago about that app. It's where homeowners can request actual valuation quotes from area agents. Uh, it's going to go head to head with Zillow's estimate, but it's also a great way for agents to, to get essentially seller leads from actual sellers that want to get the value of their home. So I met with Christian Peter yesterday, who's the co-founder. We've had him on the show before as well, and Christian showed me the back end of Homing In, where they have requests for home valuations coming in from all, literally all over the globe. Uh, mm -hmm. One came in the other day from Great Britain. They have ones in uh, for Australia, South Africa. I mean, people are finding the app and uh, and requesting valuations, but they don't have agents to fulfill the requests. So make sure you go out. The web version is coming out. The Android and iPhone version are already out. So go check out the Homing In app. It's in your app store for whatever device you have. Download it and start responding to those sellers that want actual yeah. home valuations. Don't let them go to Zillow and get crap and then complain about it afterwards. This is the app that will solve that, so go use it. Um, and uh, and then we'll you know probably I'm sure they'll turn into like an official show sponsor at some point. But right now Greg's just using it and testing it out and seeing how it's going. And we'll uh, and we'll kind of report the results as we go along. But I just wanted to mention that real quick. Yeah, it's really good stuff. I'm reaching out to a couple agents in the area. So if if you guys get a call from me about this, that you'll know what it is. Um, are you done? I am done. Oh, thank God. My ears I know. Are it took so long. Ooh, so long. God. All right, so um, I have some really cool ones today, guys. Um, number one, Eric Carey. Dude, you are hilarious. Matt, he said that he was driving in traffic the other day, and he was listening to our podcast. Naturally, who doesn't do that, right? I mean, come on. Uh, and he said that he literally laughed out loud and almost spit out water when I'm like, nestling, nestling so deep. He's like, what is it with this nestling Don't thing? Don't that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I totally am. Uh, but dude, we got shout out to you, my friend. Yeah, that, that definitely made my day when I heard that. Um, Kim Sanner, uh, you're going to do the Facebook Live with me. Um, if not Facebook Live, she's going to do the McDaniel Challenge. 
Facebook Live. Uh, she loves the Facebook Live um, and the podcast. Very uh, motivating, and she's she's really liking it. Rachel Myers, uh, we are going to go unfuck yourself, uh, quote unquote. She that's what she hit me up. She's like, okay, Greg. I've been on the fence long enough. I need to unfuck myself. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you listened to JJ's interview. That was awesome. Um, Sean, I'm meeting up with you tomorrow, man. We're going to do that first video, Facebook Live video together. We're talking about the market, kind of riffing together. That's going to be awesome, bro. Um, Andrew, dude, you're get it. You got, you, you got licensed. You know, that was awesome. I, we talked to him last month. He is now a licensed agent. He's a young guy out of Southern California. He's going to do a great, great job. Uh, great talk with Neely last night. We, we hashed out a lot of good stuff. She's making great progress. She has a podcast she's going to be coming out with. So we'll talk to you guys that when that is comes out about inspiring women. Um, I'll get to talk to Bonnie tonight, dude. I have been, Bonnie and I have been going back and forth on Facebook. Super, super awesome woman. And um, she's the one that took time on her husband's birthday to call and reserve a spot. I'm like, all right, you're awesome. You're listening to the show and you take time for my husband's birthday. So cool. So Bonnie cannot wait. Okay. James Hilfiker. I had to read that one. James, you sent an amazing note to me today. And I'm going to read this on air, man, because it is so kind of you to write this. So this is from James Hilfiker. Greg. And I know you've been growing a real estate uncensored podcast like crazy. And every day you reach out, you reach more and more people. I just wanted to say thank you. And it means a lot when you still take the time to interact on a personal level. I took the McDaniel challenge back in March and I'm scheduled to close on just shy of a half a million in volume in the next couple of weeks. This is about 25% of my volume needed each year to cap. KW. Um, thank you for your content and your daily reminder to, to push for your, for our dreams. So dude, it is my true and it is truly my pleasure. So thank you for reaching out. Your words mean a lot to me. They encourage me to always do my Facebook lives. I love to interact with you guys. And that leads into the McDaniel challenge. I know we're long winded today, but you're going to have to deal with it. Um, <laughs> Uh, making a challenge guys i i am i'm literally booked okay until july 30 uh, july um uh july 11th as of this moment guys please uh no uh, you know pl please as rachel will say unfuck yourself and please get off the fence come and hang with me my next available no i'm sorry i'm sorry it's july 12th july 12th is my next time guys please join me mcdaniel challenge 925-915-1978 private cell phone call me hour and a half to two hours of free coaching i'll go into it at the end but matt i think we need to get into questions before people want to shoot themselves yeah that's right all right so uh you want to go first you want me to go first what do you got um, you know what? Something that I I, I, always, I think that you should everyone should be asking themselves, and it's this one: Are you doing what you truly want to do? Are you truly doing what you want to do? I mean, I have asked myself this so many, so many times. Um, and you know what? If you aren't able to be honest with yourself, you aren't able to be true to who you are, then you're just lying and you're not being to your full potential. And you know, I I. The more I'm diving deep into this podcasting, I absolutely have a complete and total love for this whole training and podcasting and everything else. But I have an yeah. equal, you know, love for real estate. So it's like I get to do both of my favorite things every single day. Monday is not a bad day. Monday is like I get up, I'm like, fuck yes, this is gonna be awesome. I get to, this is a whole other week. I get to do training. I get to do a podcast. I get to do, you know work with buyers. I get, I'm, we're going on listing appointments. You know, you know Chuck or ISA. What up, Chuck? Chuck, by the way, boom, buddy, you're killing it for us, player. Um, you know, I get to go do all this stuff. I get to I I line it up every morning about how how amazing my life is. Because I'm doing what I truly want to do. I mean, imagine sitting in an office where for fluorescent lights, constant with a boss that's barking down your neck and you're thinking and dreaming about something that you want to do. Dude, you can change your life at any second if you make the decision to do it. If you don't do it, that's on you. You have no one to blame but yourself. But Greg, I got bills. I got responsibilities. Right. You do. So go and change your life to to get you know to better those responsibilities. You know, put more back into the universe. Yeah, is it scary? Hell yeah, it's scary. I mean, jumping off a ship and not knowing if you're going to land or not. But that means you have no other choice but to succeed. You will, I guarantee you, you will find a way to do it. Even if you have to take part-time jobs for a little while, you have to take a loan from your parents. You have to you know use your girlfriend's credit card, whatever it is. But I fucking guarantee you. If you have to make it, you will make it. And if you haven't called me and, and booked the McDaniel Challenge, 
and you're at that point in your life, dude, I will do an emergency call session with anyone who calls me that says they're willing to jump off where they are right now and go, and we will do an emergency session outside of everyone else just to get you off the ship and get you following your dreams. So, All bam, right. mic drop. <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> All right. So and are you doing what makes you happy? Are you doing what you want to do? I think I think I think I am. Yeah. 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 I can honestly say the same thing. It's taken a while for me to get my life to the point where I can say that. But yeah, like, uh, and we've talked about this before, Greg. I mean, we've both managed to, by hard work, we've both managed to structure our lives in such a way that our we enjoy what we do on a daily basis. So the only thing left for us to keep striving for and the reason why we keep striving and what we're reaching for is better results from what we're doing. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Like, I, I, and it dawned on me again this morning. Like, I'm not looking for anything outside of myself anymore in terms of my daily life. All I want is for the things that I'm doing to continue to, to accelerate and to build on themselves, you know, and get more successful. Yeah, reach compounding. more people. Compounding. Yeah, com compounding. And, you know, Matt, you and I are putting together, I think, something that is going to potentially change the way that our industry is running in a certain arena. Um, and I think it's something that's going to bring a massive value to a, a core group of, of individuals that will help even a bigger group of individuals. And I think that it's a, an, um, I think that what you and I are creating is going to do that. It's compounding on itself. We, we see a, a, a solution to a, a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is going to be awesome. And we're just chasing down what we want to do. I mean, you and I, like we've always said, we want to grow real estate teams and we want to podcast all, all damn day. Right. That's right. <laughs> just podcast we're on the all day. Doing that. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh, man, between Facebook Live and podcasts, and we've got a you know big announcement of something else that we're doing together. Good mm -hmm. lord, we're going to be on. Uh, we're just going to be on video all day. I'm all day long. All day long. How blessed are all the viewers, Matt? I know. <laughs> oh, they should be thanked. Like sh rain, just shower gratitude rain down upon them. Okay. <clears throat> so let me share a couple of things. Uh, uh, maybe one or two questions that that I put together a while back in terms of how to end my day. And, uh, and some, some of these things I, I evaluate more towards the weekend. It depends on the, the way that I end my, my day and so forth. But there's a couple of good questions in here that I'd like to share. So number, um, number one out of these is, did I execute my plan and follow my rituals today? And a little background on that. So I'm very, I try to be very re ritualistic in, in how I structure my week and how I structure the days within that week. So I, I, you know, if you've listened to the show before, you know that, that I theme my days. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday are podcast days. They are outward facing days. I have rituals for that. You know, I have rituals for when I get my coffee and stuff like that before the, the podcast here at three. And, uh, and then I have Tuesdays and Thursdays are my project days. So then I have different, you know, that's a little bit different structure of a day. But essentially I have rituals that are built into my life that I've tried to build up over the years that work with my energy levels, that make sure that I'm working when I'm most productive and all this stuff. So I don't work out in the morning. I work out at night because I get my most productive work done between 7 a.m. and noon. That's a ritual for me is 7 a.m. to noon, 7 a.m. to noon. So I try not to block out things that, that will take me away from that block of time, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's a good question to ask yourself is did I execute my plan and follow my rituals today? And if you don't know what your rituals are, that that in itself should lead you down the path of, okay, well, what, what are my rituals? Because if you don't set them intentionally, you have them. They're probably just not productive ones. Like you don't realize that you have rituals. Your ritual might be, you know, uh, the way that you get up and get into the office and then you uh, talk around the water cooler and the coffee machine for 20 minutes with other non-producing agents yeah. and, uh, and then maybe dink around on Facebook and, and lead generate by, you know, doing nothing <laughs> and then get on YouTube and, and watch our podcast to generate leads by doing nothing. And, you know, I mean, that's, like that's... We were, I was reading this uh, this book that's on the background right here on this table. It's called True Professionalism by David Meister. It's a phenomenal book. But he talks about dynamos, cruisers, and losers. So dynamos are the ones that are putting in the time to continually get better every day. Cruisers are the ones that are good at what they do and deliver good service, but they're just kind of, eh, they're just flatlining. And eventually their skills are going to be worth less and less as they go along because they're not continually upgrading and getting better every day. And then, of course, you have the obvious ones, which are the losers. So you want to make sure that you're in the dynamo category. So that's a good question to ask yourself at the end of the day is did I execute my plan? Did I follow my rituals? Because that's what, that is what determines whether you're in that dynamo, the cruiser, or the loser category.
Yeah, you know, another way you can do that at the end of the day is by asking is by journaling. Uh, so you yeah. can keep a written record of what you did that day. Um, if I could do a voice journal, I probably would definitely do a voice journal, but writing that shit out fucking sucks. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I like that. That's uh, So there's an, there's an app called Anchor. Maybe that'd oh, be yeah. a great way to use it is just use that as your voice journal. Well, like, well, you know, answer yourself the FM. questions and talk through it. Yeah, anchor.fm. Um, okay. I'm you can download that right now. All right, go ahead and, so, Greg, talk for the next 20 minutes. I'm going to download that app. Thanks. Oh, thank God. At least I can. Now, now I'll give the show some good content. <laughs> 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 no. Wow. Uh, this is why I love you, Frank. All right, go ahead. I'm always so uplifting to you. Always so uplifting. You are. Uh, no, that's, no, that's really some good stuff, man. That really is some good stuff. I mean, if people can structure their lives it's somewhat like that, you, you don't have to be so regimented. If, you know, I'm, I'm sure, Matt, you weren't like that. From, well, you were probably like that from the beginning. But most people, <laughs> maybe you. <laughs> well, go read The Power of Full Engagement, and then you'll understand the concept of rituals in their proper place and why they are like. You have to have a way to structure your time. If you don't, you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off, Greg. I mean, you have a structure to your week. I've you showed me your calendar. Yeah, you, may most people busy. you may recoil at the word, but you have systems and you have rituals. Oh no, absolutely. I mean, today I I, I have such a structured day. It's not even funny. Mm -hmm. I got in the office, went to go train for three hours. You know, came back here, took care of some office stuff, doing the podcast. Right from the podcast, I'm going to a, I'm on a panel in Walnut Creek with top producers. Couple hundred people, I think, are going to be there, and then from that, I leave at five five fifty five. I get on the call with Bonnie at six, and I'm on there till probably about eight. So yeah, I mean, structure is good, and I think that journaling something is very powerful. I've told the story several times, but uh, in Darren Hardy's book, uh, The Compound Effect, one of his friends was having a just like he's like, dude, what is going on? Like every other th Thursday, I just feel like crap. I don't, I don't get it. So Darren's like, okay, we'll start journaling. You know, write out, tell me what you're doing every day. What he found after a month is that every every other Wednesday, he would go have lunch with coworkers from his past job. And that would throw him into a funk. So what he did is he eliminated the lunch with the coworkers from past past job. Guess what happened? No more funk on Thursday. You know, and so that could help you guys in multiple different, you know, you know, areas of your life, if, if it's personal, professional, you know, family, friends, whatever it is, if there's something that's funking you up a little bit, you know, write it out, you know, maybe do anchor.fm, maybe do just an audio recording that you can transcribe at you know, rev.com for a dollar a minute. Um, there's a variety of different opportunities out there. But if you if you can track it, you can quantify, it. you can quantify, it. you can, you can, uh, you know, become better and eliminate the, 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 the chaff or the or the negativity in your life. I mean, this, in the mornings, when I'm feeling funky monkey, I do go, I do go do a thing called meridian tapping. It's an old ancient energy clearing uh, technique that trust me, feels so stupid when you do it. You say certain <laughs> phrases in a certain series, you tap on certain parts of your head and, and chest, but I can tell you one thing, you know, it, and I don't know if it's a placebo effect or not, but I can tell you every time I do it, something will positive in, in whatever area I'm, I'm doing energy release in happens for me that day. It, I feel really good about it. And I try to build that into my day. Um, also, I, I, I also try to um, definitely get exercise. I mean, that's one of my big things. You go in the night, I go in the morning. I, I'm foggy if I don't do it in the morning. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm foggy if I do it in the morning. Really? Yeah, super foggy. Like, I get my best mental work done if I just get up and go to work. So, you know, and get to work. So I have my morning ritual and it's to get, it's to get started at seven and just keep plowing and get as much done as I can from 7 to noon. If I tried to work out, and I have, I have gone and worked out at 6.30 or 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning, I just have about half the endurance. I don't know what it is. Just weird thing about my my body. Hmm. Yeah, well, I get up and take drugs, so I get up and take like an energy shot, like one of these things. Um, one of these little guys. I, I, I take Adderall. It's only five, half a milligram. It's nothing big. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, the best way to get up and get get going in the morning, do get up and drink two cups of water, man. Your body will jumpstart with two cups of water. So, okay, let's do this. Um, want to take another question? Yeah, give me another question from your side, Greg. Inspirational question. Inspirational. Um, okay, here's this. Here's a good question for you. And this is a reality check for you guys. How many promises have you made, and how many of them have you fulfilled? I'm going to immediately think back for all of you guys back to your New Year's resolutions, which by January 5th, you'd broke them all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but no, no, yeah. think about it, like that kind of stuff. Because my motto, I'll let you go. But my motto is if I make a promise, 
you know, to someone, I'm going to keep it because that's keeping a promise to myself. And I break, if I break a promise to myself, I have no reason to believe that I can hold it to anybody else. So that's, you know, that's why when I say I'm going to call you guys at 6 p.m. on the dot, then I will call you at 6 p.m. on the dot because I made you that promise. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Uh, as far as the question or my thoughts on that one? Well, wouldn't they be the same? No. How many promises have you made and how many have you fulfilled? Yeah, so uh, just a quick marketing perspective on that. So uh, part of the, the concept of building your own like media platform, whether it's a podcast, a blog, a video show like we have here, um, whatever it is. So one of the ways that you build trust with an audience of people is by making promises and then keeping them. So that, that's a very, very, very essential part of your content strategy. So ask yourself, you know, when you're putting out content, when you're doing something on Facebook, when you're doing something regular in terms of, uh, of blogging or putting out content, are you making promises and then keeping them? And this is something uh, I'm trying to work out, like my schedule is going to, to change here in the next like month or so when we launch this new thing. Uh, but eventually I'm going to find a time that works where I can commit to doing Facebook Live at X time every single day or X time three day, these three days a week which are the podcast days because what I want is I'm and because I'm asking myself that same question when it comes to marketing am I making promises and then keeping them and the yes you don't want to make promises and break them but you do want to look for ways when you're putting out content to make promises and then keep them because prom like trust equals promises kept over time is a really good quote I heard from uh, from a guy one time so promises kept over time equals trust and uh, the more that you make promises in your marketing and then keep them, the more trust that you'll build. So one of the interesting things that came out of the whole experiment with, um, you remember the uh, the direct mail company that Frank from Viral started here, I think it was last year, where they mailed expired listings? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so Jeff Cohn tried something similar to that years before, just specifically to expireds. It was a 10-step direct mail program, and it every single step said, hey, this is one of 10. This is three of 10. This is eight of 10. This is 10 of 10. He would have, and the most successful people actually waited to contact him until they got all 10 from him. Get out. Yes, I kid you not. <laughs> Collecting like, like high people. level people, like the people with the most expensive expired listings would wait until they got all 10 letters and then they would call him. Did they get like a secret code so they can have a decoder ring? Yeah, that's right. They got, <laughs> yeah, that's right. They get the prize in the bottom of the Cracker Jack box. <clears throat> but how interesting is that, right? Yeah, no, it really is interesting because they wanted to see this all, the whole cycle. They wanted to see the follow through. They wanted to see if he was serious and if he backed up his promises. That is really interesting. Yeah. So, what do you? Where is that not taking place in your life right now? Who is? Who are you letting down on a maybe a consistent basis and not following through on them? Maybe it's uh, I would say my personal trainer who sets a calendar for me, which I pay him to do, and we meet every week to two weeks, depending on on what's going on, what month it is. But yeah, that's that's the person that I'm letting down now because I'm prioritizing my girl and her schedule over my workout schedule. So like you're always balancing these like trying like you make commitments to one person or you make commitments to yourself in one area and you have to prioritize what's most important. And right now making you know I, I'm putting someone else's calendar for the evenings above my own and then I'm not doing the best job of forcing myself to go at odd times to the gym to work out to fulfill that promise to myself to get in every workout per week that I need to get in. So that's where I need to improve. You might gain a pound if you do, if you keep that up and that'd be catastrophic. I have gained a pound and I don't like ah, it. Ah, the horrors in life, Matt. Yeah, can you see that? See that? That's My jaw is not as sharp as it needs to be. Oh my God. Oh, yeah, I knew there was something off. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, Andy, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're fat, that's it. <laughs> every person just like, yeah, what a dick. Uh, like, yeah. Um, okay, here's one. Violently threw up. Okay, go ahead. If you were to die now, would you have any regrets? That is an excellent question. So how do you... Well, all right. Well, you go first on that, Greg. If you had to actually want to answer this... Yeah. All right. I mean, what, do you, what do you say? Go first. If I was to die right now, um, I think there might be a few of them. Um... Uh, well, I'm fulfilling one of them in December. We're going to the Caribbean. I mean, that's something I told myself I've always wanted to do my entire life. And I'm going to be able to be speaking, which is something that I'm, I've am i always wanted to do more and more of. Um, I'm about a, a frog's fart away from getting the, you know, the TV show uh, that Rod is doing down in San Diego up here. 
and mm -hmm. uh, getting that out the run that's been a dream of mine so if i was to die today yeah i'd be i think i would have those i would be very bummed i, I i've been striving and working for years to get a television show just because i've always wanted one i mean I, I just i just want one okay some people want ferraris i want a fucking tv show um and maybe a little bit more in on if i i wish i'd had found a solid solid woman in my life that uh, I think would love me back as much as I would love her. I, I would, that I would get the experience that true passionate romance for an extended period of time. Um, I've had little glimpses of it, little snapshots of it, but I've never been able to, you know, latch hold of, of a really quality, you know, young lady. I mean, because I watched my parents, my grandparents. I mean, we went. My grandparents are ninety and ninety-two. We just celebrated their sixty-fifth wedding anniversary. My mom, her two brothers are all, you know, they've all had very successful marriages. My sister has a very successful marriage. All my friends have very successful relationships. And I, I don't, I have prioritized other things in my life. And I may regret that down the road. Uh, but if I was to die today, I would have wished that there would have been someone special in my life for a longer period of time. Yeah. But it's going to be, it'll, yeah, it'll be well worth that it. One. Yeah. So that would be something I, 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 yeah, if I was to die today. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get real. All right. So I, I can't top that. I, I would have to agree with that one. That's that's probably one of my biggest ones. Although I, I don't feel like that's that that is something that's outside of my control a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of like just meeting the right person. Like you, you can put yourself out there, but you can't necessarily control who you meet. Um, but as far as regrets in terms of things that I could have potentially controlled if I had put more effort and focus into those things and let other things go would be the fact that I've chosen business and not put out the music that I could have put out in the last five years. And so, and that's one of the things that I need to get better at focusing on over the next couple of years as I build the business is not focusing exclusively on that and still getting into the studio once a month or so. That's, that's a goal mm -hmm. is to, is to throw off enough income to do that. And, uh, so that would be one of my regrets is to not have, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the music that I've made. You know, there's a few albums out there. Um, but I haven't made as much, and it hasn't been like my ultimate vision of what I could do. So that's mm -hmm. number one regret, uh, besides the you know not not being married, me and the right person thing. Uh, the other thing would be not having gone to Africa. So like for your thing with the Caribbean, I've wanted to go to Africa and certain specific country in Africa since I was, I want to say, well before I was 11. Um, so when I was 11, I decided on the specific city in the specific country that I wanted to potentially minister in. But before that, I knew I wanted to go to the continent. It was just a matter of where. And again, I, you know, the the couple of opportunities that I've had to go have fallen through. But I haven't pushed it to the point where I just decided I'm going to go regardless of whether a door opens or not. I I was kind of sitting back for a while and just seeing what doors would open. And when one would open, I would pursue it, and then it would close. So and that that comes down to you know, should I have been more aggressive? Should I have been? Should I've just decided to go? So now I have an opportunity. My cousin works for a nonprofit, and she has an opportunity to potentially go and just bring whoever she wants. Uh, so it's awesome. just a matter of uh, of timing and uh, and taking the money away from what it could be doing in business to go do that. And so that would be one of my major regrets if I just fell off a cliff today. Would be that I've never been to Africa. Well, knock on wood, that doesn't happen. Yes, yeah. well, I'll try not to walk off my balcony. Please don't. That would just hurt you. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not high enough. You'd only hurt yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Break a leg or something. Okay. So um, so here's a good question to ask at the end of the day, and this is something that I, that I do ask myself. So did I push myself through any fear or discomfort? Was I mentally tough today? Did I push myself through any fear or discomfort? Was I mentally tough today? Am I answering this first or are you answering this first? No, we can just talk about the question. So, I mean, that's oh. – uh, yeah, I mean – for me, I mean, it comes down to, you know, putting yourself in situations where you're, you know, uh, where there's, uh, you're dependent or you have an attachment to the outcome that generates fear, right? And then there's discomfort, right? So you have the psychic pain of getting up in the, at the same time each morning, right? Your body fights, you, your mind fights you. Actually, you know? not me. I, I, my body literally gets me up at 445. Like, hey, dickhead, get up. It's time to go to yeah. the gym at five. Yeah, I hate I, you. I bitch slap it back to sleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine does the opposite. I have to bitch slap myself out of bed. With the walking dead in your house in the morning, just dragging your dog by the tail. He's like, no, dude, I don't want to go that way. Um, you're like, oh, sorry, bro. I was just don't get the dish. Um, <laughs> interesting. Um, I, I start my day off and I've talked about this a lot. I started off saying, you know, today's going to be an amazing day. 
you know, today is going to be an amazing day. And today is going to be an amazing day. Three times I recite back, like I said earlier, what I'm going to be doing, what I get excited about. That helps me become mentally tough that, during the day. Because then I get to look back with positive energy and go like, dude, I, I still get to go do this. Like after this, like we're off this thing in 10 minutes. Dude, I get, to, I'm going to hustle the Trader Joe's, get something for my dinner. Dude, then I get to go and they get to go talk in front of a bunch of people and help them build their, you know, build their businesses even more. How fucking cool is that? Then I get to talk to Bonnie. I mean, come on. If you allow yourself to be beat down mentally, you're doing it. You can change your state like Tony Robbins says at any second. Bam changed but it's up to you if you want it so i guess if you i guess if you haven't been mentally strong then you we need to go back and you know retool your old you know your brain and the way you're seeing things if you change the way you see things the things you see are going to change mm -hmm. you know like it, you're sitting you're stuck in traffic you know you're like god damn it, traffic blah 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 but think about it i'll swap it around and be like dude I get this extra time to listen to this book on tape or this great, you know, recording of something. Or I get to listen to my favorite music for extra, for more time, you know, or I get to people watch, you know, whatever, whatever it is. I mean, maybe, maybe you're so hectic. Maybe you just turn everything off and you're just thankful for dead silence for the next little bit and you're revel in it. Yeah. That does help me. Oh God. Yeah. I never understood yeah. why my dad used to drive around in dead silence. I totally get it now. <laughs> yeah, that that's something. So I mean, being a musician, you're you just you constantly have music going, especially in the car. It's just like it. That's it's like a natural state. And mm -hmm. uh, and as I've gotten, as the demands of business have increased, and your mind starts to run more, I've I've learned the virtues of driving in silence. So sometimes I'll drive up an hour or whatever to go, you know, hang out with my girl, and just drive up there with nothing on the whole time because it just it 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 like separates you from the workday. But it also gives you the time and mental space to to really just kind of think through specific things without just letting your brain wander aimlessly. And that's like that's the worst thing you can do. Like if you're going to problem solve, focus on the problem intensely and then completely forget about it. Or you know, like go go to the extremes, but don't just let your brain just kind of turn things over and wander freeform from one thing to the next. Just worry, 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 or you know, yeah. thinking about five different problems at a time. Like focus on one thing at a time, figure out either what you're going to do about it or, you know, go through your pros and cons list or whatever and then kind of set that aside and don't let your mind just turn over and worry about it. Yeah, I mean, like you and I have been working on this this project we were, were you know, loosely referencing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I will sit there, I'm tr like as, uh, we, we try, to, try to zombify it. I am trying to zombify it. You right. Know? Jay talked to, talked to us about that, and you know I've I've been really trying to do it, and it's really interesting when you when you do this, your mind will start coming up with crazy crazy ways of trying to get you know to work the problem. I was listening to um, on Audible.com. If any of you guys are Audible.com uh, subscribers, they have a new thing called Channels uh, that just came out, and Channels is here. I'll show you the, what I'm listening to. Like I'm listening to, you know, the Harvard Business Reviews all their articles that people are writing for the Harvard Business Review. Now I can actually read this shit. I mean, some of it is way over my head, but there's amazing content that's here that I just listen to, you know, to maybe soothe yourself. Um, but so, yeah, that's, yeah, the side note, but I thought it was pretty cool to tell, sh share with mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah, it's a good tip. And if anybody wants more tips like that, just go back and watch uh, Monday's episode with the Wright Brothers. They give a ton of tips like that, which um, is where that came from. So. Oh. Here is something cool, Matt. Before, do we want to answer another question? We got a few minutes left, but I want to talk about that cool little tech tip I told you about. Yes, let's go with the tech tip, and then we'll we'll finish this one out. Okay, guys, there is a. I was researching for a Facebook Live there, and I stumbled upon this thing, and it's so it's. I'll give you in a second. It says stands for Let Me Google That for You, and dot com. But it's, this is what you're typing in. It's like it's an L M G T F Y Dot com. Let me Google that for you. Um, what it does, guys, is it you can go in and what they've talked about. If you want to show value to your sellers more, uh, you can go in, type in, wait a couple of days after you've uploaded the property to uh, uh, to the MLS. Go in, type in the address. That it's going to create an immediate link for you. This is, there's a little there's three there's three little buttons at the bottom there. This one over here is going to be preview. Click preview. And then preview will pull it up and it'll show that it's going to go, basically it's going to condense every search out there with that address on it. It's going to show that you've put this property on like 
every single site known to man. <laughs> All you did is hit enter on the MLS, but they don't know that. Um, and you, 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 then you can say, hey, look, Matt, Julie, your three obese babies that are not diabetic and, you know, bulimic. Oh, no, it can't be bulimic. Um, yeah, I think we say <laughs> ovo lactose, lactose intolerance. Yes. Yeah, something uh, like that. You have some ailment. They'll have a new ailment every show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're going through menopause. Poor things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you go and you, and you shoot the link over and say, hey, Matt, Julie, your three obese babies that have lactose intolerance. Here is a, uh, a link I want to show you how much we've been working for you, how much we've been hustling, you know, where, how people can go find your home on the web. So, again, guys, um, it's just kind of a cool tip. Check it out. Try it out and tell me what you think. Very cool. All and right. Google, do it yourself, too. I did it on myself. And I'm like, whoa, huh, whoa, what's oh, up? Oh, you have to be everywhere. Yeah, man. Yeah. It, it was pretty yeah. funny. I have too common a name, sadly. So even if I was everywhere, so were those other annoying guys. There's actually two different drummers named Matt Johnson, and one of them played for uh, Jeff Buckley back in the day. Somebody asked me that one time. Dude, you should just be start the Triple J band. The nothing but drummers. No, <laughs> nothing but drummers. That's right. <laughs> She's like, nothing drummer. but drummers. No, that's that actually would drive me nuts, and I am I do play. Okay, so. Um, so just want to quickly thank Viral Marketing and uh, direct you to Greg's Marketing Examples.com. Thank you so much for uh, for supporting the show and checking that out and seeing what they're doing for Greg and and how they can possibly help you too. You can actually see his YouTube channel, the emails they send out for him, and all kinds of good stuff there, as well as a video where he describes what they do for him. And then check out the Homing In app. So like I said, there's uh, there's requests coming in right now from homeowners. Check it out. Download the app. See if there's anybody in your area. If not, they can potentially. Uh, uh, they're rolling it out all over the country. They're getting requests from all over the world for home valuations. So make sure to check that out. It's homing in. So check it out on the App Store either for uh, if you're Apple, iPhone, or the Google Play Store for your Android device. And uh, and then we we'll refresh people's memory on the McDaniel Challenge. And the McDaniel Challenge is a life-changing event, Matt, where people will <laughs> walk away with a newfound you know resolve to keep on living this and fighting the fight, the tough fight. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it just got upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just like an hour and a half to two hours you guys come on in and we'll get booked with me we're july 12th is my next open date uh for you guys to talk uh with me it's free there's no obligation there's no sales pitch there's nothing we're gonna sit back have a couple of drinks relax you know get to know each other find what's stopping you blocking you or hindering you from getting to where you want to be in your in your business life if you're on the fence get off the freaking fence is there, if you're there, that means you're exactly where you need to be to take this challenge. Also, follow me. Go subscribe to me on Facebook, guys. I'm nearly out of friends. I'm almost at 5,000. Uh, so please subscribe to me. You'll see my Facebook Lives. All my Facebook Lives are going to be different content that is not here on the show. Uh, I, go five, I go live five days a week, um, sometimes six, depending on how I feel on the weekends. Um, but you know what? You'll get to know me on a more intimate, personal level. And you know what? Uh, I cannot wait to see you guys interact with me, talk with me. You know, I love, I love chat, chit-chatting back and forth with you guys. So I look forward to seeing you. And yeah, we just love you. And I really, 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 really want to help you guys achieve the, the life of your dreams. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, with that, we've got Andy Green coming up on the show on Friday. So join us then live, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, McDanielRealEstateSystems.com slash live is where you go to watch the live feed uh, anytime we are live. And make sure you follow us on Facebook. That way you know exactly when we're going live and who the guests are. So check us out on Facebook. And then um, Greg, you can follow him friend request him or just follow his Facebook page. You can find him, Greg McDaniel, in uh, in Walnut Creek, California. Pretty easy to find. And then I am also easy to find. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat, all under Pursuing Results, or you can go to PursuingResults.com. So uh, I have alluded to it, but I don't talk about it on the show much, probably as much as I need to. But um, So that my business is helping people produce podcasts and I actually book the guests for them, as well as do all the email and social media promotion on the backside, basically taking the systems that we've developed for this podcast and selling it as a package system to anybody else that wants to run a podcast at this level. So if that's something that you want to do, check out PursuingResults.com or shoot me an email at Matt at PursuingResults.com. I need to do that more. I need to talk yes, about you that. Do, Matt. Yes, you do, Matt, because right. your, your services are, are, are sadly needed out there, and you're the best in the business. They would be you know, remiss not to work with you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that endorsement. I'm going to steal that and use it in, uh, <laughs> on my website. You surely can. I would be. I'm Greg McDaniel, and I approve this message. That's right. Rubber stamp. Bam. All right. <laughs> with that said, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Thanks for hanging out with us live here on uh, Real Estate Uncensored. We will see you guys on Friday again. Thank you so much. We love you guys. We love you guys. See you soon.